trauma bonding doesn't give you a solution because you spoke about the problem and now you guys are like okay yeah, so and then when they even ask you okay so you're good now you're good now because you were able to relate relate and so momentarily but there was no solution so that mom- was found exactly. so momentarily you're happy What's up, everybody? It's your favorite podcast man back again with another great episode. I am Michael Scenario. And I'm Mura Walgunkaya. And you are Menizims. What's up? What's up? Welcome. And make sure you subscribe to all our audio platforms, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, anything else. Make sure you join us. We welcome you. How you doing, my G? Always good. You know, Always good. How's your week been? How's everything going? How's life? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're moving. I mean, it's still the petrol car still. We're still suffering. Anyways, we're back with another great topic. And it's a chilled conversation, but an open conversation today. Today's topic is about men asking for help. Or who do we go to when it's time to ask for help? So I'm sure there are a lot of different parts of this topic we can dissect into. But I guess the first question is... Do you actually ask for help? That is the first question. I'll, I'll admit, I like this topic because it's going to help us vent and, you know, we're a little lit right now. You yeah. Know? <laughs> um, but um, personally, um, recently, I can't lie, I like this topic because I have been needing help and I've been trying to ask for help. So what that means is, I'll look, I'll break it down into certain parts. So... Asking for help in there's asking for help in your personal life, asking for help in your work life, asking for help maybe in your relationship, spiritual life. There are those aspects of asking for help. Um, for me, um, especially as a guy, I was brought up in a society as a Nigerian. Should I say that asking for help sometimes is not the go-to thing? where it's like they make you figure it out on yourself and especially as men especially as black men because again the way i grew up again for our viewers that are watching before you can say hey say in america again guess what i'm doing it (laughs) but no because honestly i i love you guys but at the same time you have those people that keep saying you keep bringing it up it's part of my life what do you want me to do anyways but growing up as a nigerian one where it's like asking for help is like they teach you to figure it out but then also growing up as a black male in america there's also that side where you only ask for help in certain situations or you try and figure it out again so that's double sides yeah it made me figure out things a lot and made me shy to ask questions that even up to now you know now i ask for help by having conversations with certain people that are my friends certain people i look up to like when we have conversations those questions will come out but there are a lot of times i do generally want to ask for help in other aspects of my life that maybe i'm too shy to ask for it or i'm too nervous or i'll, I'll be overthinking and it was there's good and bad in it whereby the way they brought us up as nigerians to not ask questions it's good whereby yeah you do learn to figure it out on your own but in that figuring out on your own there's so much you could have learnt early or certain things you could have picked up by asking the question that would have sped up your process. But because you didn't ask and you figured it out on your own, you had to go through those trials and all to figure it out. Some people figure it out on their own like that. Like there's some things I figured out in life that was like this, but there's some that I know took a long time where I could have asked the question and it could have gotten there. So I guess, yeah, that's our question to you is like, you know, first off, do you ask for help? So this this particular topic, and I know for people who who know me and would watch this, <laughs> this is something I very much struggle with, right? Mm. And when I say struggle, I don't even mean that I um. So I thing is, at first I just took it as something being a man came with, right? Where it's like, like you said, no questions asked, just you have a problem, you solve it, solve it. right? And Especially where we're coming from a society where you don't have a lot of men even showing you how to ask for help. Oh, do you understand? That's like, it. You don't have them That's showing it. you what to say, who to ask for. Who to ask. You know, there's no there's there's literally there's no there's no blueprint to work with. Like it's mm. just you're the one that's going and I imagine that every single guy navigates it like this. Like you're the one just choosing to assume who you should and should not ask. You know, mm-hmm. help from because obviously you know the men before us 
ask for help at some point in their lives and it would have been nice to just get some kind of training wheels so we understand that okay you know what the people to really go to for help are people who've done this for you or people who are in this position in your life or people who can do this for you those are people to ask for or okay you know these people don't ever ask them for help it might be good in the beginning but it's always detrimental in the end these were things we needed because and we have to figure it out by trial and error yeah and the problem with figuring it out with trial and error is that some of the trial that becomes an error is always traumatizing mm. now here's why i said this is interesting for me right and i'll give you an example of what i'm traumatizing so let's say i'm talking with a friend it could be a friend that's just pure friend mm. male female doesn't matter what the gender is and you know um we're talking and maybe in that instance we're talking about maybe both our problems you know how you could just you know relate to someone based on what you guys are going through and then maybe i'm saying that oh you know what i'm just financially strained right now that this this thing i was this thing i was meant to kick off you know there's this payment that's meant to come from this client hasn't come in yet so, i mean you're just expressive right mm. but at the same time of course you need help but as a guy you're, you're shying away from it you don't want to seem like because when it comes to money topics when it comes to men now that's one of the most sensitive exactly. topics exactly so you for you to discuss your finances with another man even if it's even your if close it's friend free- if, there's a there some, there's exactly. a self pride that has been built within us, like you say, from that. Not especially as Nigerians, the whole communicate. First of all, we're not even taught about communicating. Yeah. So when it comes to finances, even from an early age, you've seen how money is power. Exactly. Whereby whoever has the most money, especially if it's a male, is like that's exactly. the big dog. Exactly. But. If that guy is going through a struggle or anything now, nobody talks about it. In fact, you look down on the people that ask questions about money. Yes. In our and society. So, this, so that's, what, and that's what I was getting at. Because, you know, having this conversation with this person and, you know, you're just expressing your monetary, financial, what, I mean, this happens to everybody, even the richest people have financial struggles. Like in the sense that, you know, maybe they're trying to close a deal that's not being closed yet and they know it's, more money they're about to lose or an investment they're about to like you know lose so having that conversation and you know the maybe the person then asks oh okay so what kind of financial whatever you what kind of financial pickle are you in and maybe you just you're not saying it because you're asking the person for help but you're saying it out of it's a conversation you're having and the person has given you the floor to be open so you say oh maybe i'm just giving rough numbers here maybe oh i need 100k for something you know for something something and the person, maybe at that time, the person is actually able to help you. Now, mm-hmm. here's what I'm getting at. So the person's like, oh, okay. I mean, if that's what you need, I have it. I can give it to you. And then whenever you're ready, you give it back. And of course, you know, out of respect for the person, you're trying to, you know, um, uh, you you take the offer, you know, because of course you need the help. The person's your friend. Mm-hmm. You're not seeing more than that. You're not seeing more than the person is your friend mm-hmm. and they're willing to help. You know, because again, this is your first time. Don't forget about talking about trial and error now. Sure. So we're talking about a time when you've never experienced being rejected, or you're just open to you know any kind of help, and the help is from your friend. So you're like, okay, I'm on. This is my friend, so I shouldn't have any issues. And then you take the help. Of course, out of respect for your friend, you pay back on time and stuff mm. like that. And then uh, something happens later on, and then they maybe they need help. Again, just the same kind of conversation. But the help they need isn't quite something you can help with. So, for example, maybe they said, okay, they need a job. But the kind of job they need is, oh, they need to, maybe like a PA to an MD somewhere or a PA to a CEO. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, if I, if I, if I, if I hear anything, I'll be on the lookout. But you're not in a position, you're not in the kind of workspace where you know a lot of CEOs or MDs or you can talk to somebody, you know. I mean, you definitely put in the word every chance you get, but yeah. it's not something you can tell the person, okay, you know what, I know a few people, let me call mm. But at the same time, you'd be like, you know what, I'll support whatever I can. I'll push stuff up. And then you hear the person then maybe say, maybe you just pass a comment like, oh, really? And then when it was my time to help you, I didn't even think twice about but, it. But, you know, one thing I've realized with that is because, like I said, especially from a Nigerian aspect, that sounds very Nigerian. Of course, I, I like mean, say, I, uh, yeah. Like, hey, you don't want to tell me is that I guess it's a case of knowing yourself, which is very easy to say then do because we're all human beings when the action happens like something like that happens no matter what you are still going to have that feeling of wow like and that's the trauma so that's i was saying this because where? that's where the trauma starts because for me i struggled with that a lot like again in my industry especially in the entertainment events industry i would say personally i've helped a lot of people now in saying that a lot of people have helped me mm-hmm. but there have been a lot of times that 
for the people that have helped me find, like a lot of people have helped me and I've helped a lot of people, but there have been a lot of times where people have come to me for help that I can't, they think because of the perception of the position I'm in that I can, can put you in that put, door yeah. where there's only so much I can do because not that I'm limited, but again, you're not in that position because you know somebody in that position doesn't, doesn't mean, mean they're going to get you the job. Yeah, yeah. And I have seen that and that actually gave me a lot of trauma whereby you see how people switch. And I guess it also comes down to a case where you have to also, again, I keep coming back to this know yourself because I guess because I'm now 30, I'm on this self-actualization journey that I've just started where I have to really process and analyze things more. Where there are a lot of times as a human being and even as Nigerians, we focus on the negative a lot. Whether we like it or not, Nigerians, we, also, do. we, we do. always, naturally, there's something about of the negative. We yeah. always like, hey, don't do this. Hey, no. It's like, yeah. why are we always so negative? There's like, And we're positive con. people. That's the annoying part. Yeah, there's always one downside like, oh, exactly. no. Exactly. No, don't. If you do it, don't. And, uh, but then it's like I had to I'm trying to unlearn that whereby yo think of the people that I have helped you think of the people that will help you instead of the trauma that has happened whether we like it or not rejection is always going to come in our lives no matter how big you are no matter how small you are but I guess like you say you have to really get to a point I mean this is advice to the guys that are watching that you have to get to a point that you start to unlearn these should I say, not bad habits, but the trauma. Unlearn the trauma. So, so that way you can actually find the right helpers that yeah. can put you in the right positions of where you want to get to. So this this is really important because, I mean, I'll say this for a fact that I've definitely lost friendships because I, I, I couldn't accept help. Now, you see, it's, it's one thing to ask. It's another thing where the person even has seen, or maybe you've mentioned the help before in the past and they offered, you said no, and then they re-offer. So, you know, it's just say, for example, um, like how I give the instance of 100K, I need 100K. Then the person offers me. Now, I've already experienced one trauma before. So now somebody else offering me 100K, I'm, I'm already weary. I'm like, mm. Mm, I'm not going to take nothing from you if you're going to switch up later and stuff like that. So I'm, instantly, I'm like, nah, you know what? It's fine. I'll figure it out. And I'm already coming from a place to where I've been told to always figure it out. Mm. You get it? So I have two things here pushing me away from asking for help or away from accepting help. Now, when the person... The person always wants to come from an understanding position where they're like, mm. okay, you know what? I get you. It's fine. I'm not going to force the help on you, but I'm always available if you think you want to change your mind. So there may be sometime in a week, two, three weeks, you know, they see you that you're still struggling with this particular thing. And it could also be someone who knows that usually you would have moved forward if you had sorted that problem out, right? Mm -hmm. They know that you're not a lazy person. They know that they just know that, oh, that thing is really, you know, a stumbling block for you to make some progress. And so they come with the offer again. And then they say, look, I'm, I'm back again. You know, I know last time you told me you had this reason and that reason for not wanting my help. But I'm hoping now that you maybe have a change of heart. And then in that instance, you're saying, mm, mm. still no. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, it's still not... I've lost friendships based on that. This, oh, so, I don't the, know the, about that. But. This, no, no, and I'm telling you, so I didn't, I didn't even think it was a thing. So, and I wouldn't have been able to share this story if I hadn't experienced this, right? I didn't think it was a thing. I just thought it was, okay, you should even be happy. I'm not accepting your help kind of thing. But I find that people who truly value the friendship they have with you mm -hmm. as well as, you know, they value the potential progress they see in you and mm -hmm. what heights they think you can reach. In fact, they value that they could be a part of that in that, you know, the help they're giving is to enable you get to this higher ground. But then with a case to. like that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. That shouldn't be a ground for losing a friendship if I don't want to accept it. Because with a friendship, you have to respect each other's boundaries. Yes. It's yes. like, I relate with that what you said. Because for me, there are only certain friends I ask for help. Mm -hmm. exactly. now don't get me wrong there's people that have come and offered help that is like maybe a prayer point of god i need i need help and, just and then the right god, time, exactly right. that you accept because you do have to use wisdom because not everybody you accept help from but if you're i would say my if you're my friend and we're genuinely friends we understand each other yeah because there's some friends like even you just in that i know there were periods like i'll give a personal example like there were points last year, in fact, the year before, early last year, where I was just starting all over. I didn't have shit. <laughs> and you wouldn't know because I'm still doing, yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah, out. Yeah. So you go carry yourself, bro. I'm asking, there was, I can count on my hand the friends that I could 
call to ask for money, monetary help or something like that, just because of the self, call it self pride. Yes. Yeah. Whereby the way you just said it, the way we were brought up, we're taught, figure it out yourself. Figure it out, yeah. But then for the other people that could help me, I wouldn't even go to them. I'm not saying they can't help me, but it's that pride. But then there's certain friends, there's a safety net I had that whether yes or no, I can always go to these people. And I did. Yeah. And they did help me. Like you said, 100K, bro, 100K felt like a million sometimes, you know, but there was a respect and boundary we had that, you know, you're going to pay back, you're going to respect this. And then the other people that I'll say no to now, I did see those sides of those people that switched. Ah, oh, you're not accepting my help, but... I guess my rule in my own mind is if you're my friend, you, would, you shouldn't even, if you're truly my friend, mm -hmm. you shouldn't vex that I'm not accepting your help. The only time I would vex as your friend is if you're rejecting help, not in a monetary way, but in a way that, help you know, changing your life for the better. Something like that. Like if you're going through shit, like I remember like there's times I've had, I've had some friends that have gone through like some drug problems yeah, or even like grief. Uh, grief problems like grief is actually i won't even say grief because grief is obviously different that's a yeah. that's very different no no me. so I'm, I'm, i mentioned so, grief because you know as much as they're going through no i relate that's what i said i relate yeah. to it the only reason i'm not mentioning grief is just because i understand from a perspective whereby with grief unless you've experienced that grief you now actually yeah, you yeah, don't understand, you understand. understand but yeah. then something like drugs now like when somebody's overdoing it even if you're not doing the drugs you can relate that yo this is not this good is for lot, you yeah. where there's some friends we lost like i did lose because you're offering help and they're not taking it mm -hmm. and they're still messing up their life but now you know it's a point that you've been trying to help but you know they are actively making that decision and like, you can't yo, even have that friendship i can't even help you anymore you can't even have the friendship because like the constant engagement in that you. is yeah yeah there's yeah. a friend i'll never forget this like this is even one of the reasons why it made me calm down like obviously we've all i believe for being honest on this podcast we've all engaged we've all engaged in one, in one you know alcohol drug and when i say drug maybe just weed because all the other drugs are bad because you are like <laughs> but we you know and there was yeah. a friend in college i'll never forget my final year of uni i still remember the nigga's name now and he was a good dude man like he was actually chilled funny he'll come to our house smoke up from time to time and was smart too like yo this dude was passing then at one point you saw the change where you could tell he was going through something that the drugs were getting harder like it mm -hmm. wasn't just weed anymore it was right. other stuff added on and at first it's like ha 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 you know, like, because he was white, too. Like, I had a lot of, like, you also say, you know, the difference between your white friends and black friends. And, like, my black friends, you had some of them that would do that, but you know they'll know the limit. But this white friend, like I said, was focused throughout the three, four years we're there. Final year, I don't know what happened till today. Something happened at home. He just started switching up. Drugs got it getting heavier. The nights out were getting heavier. And at first, it's ha-ha. Then it's like, yo, you good? What's up? Like, you good? Yo, you look different. What's up? Talk to me. You're asking these questions over time and time again. They're not answering. They keep saying, like, it's okay. Then eventually, you know something's wrong that you're calling out this friend now. You, you know, that's like your last straw as a friend that you're calling them out. He wouldn't change. And I will never forget the last time I saw this dude that you knew the friendship was over. And not even just for me, for my squad, too, because it used to be squads of friends. He came to my house one day at, like, 7, 8 a.m. in the morning. This nigga is high as fuck and not high in in terms of smoking in terms of high on high, some other high, shit yeah and he's just like yo let's just go to the park today let's and i'm looking at him like this like bro what are you doing he's like yeah i'm just gonna get loose today and get this i'm like yo i ain't going man like oh i ain't I, I can't really do that bro it's eight in the morning all that like yo are you good and all that and it's like something in my spirit just said like yeah this is it because you've it's been so long it's mm. been and when i say long it wasn't week it was months of trying months of trying and once we had that conversation at the door, once I shut that door, that was the last time I saw his brother. So I do get whereby you do have your limits as friends. But even with that, like, for example, like, if you don't ask, that's why I said, like, you're also going to be at fault to an extent because we offered as friends, but he never asked. And I think sometimes you, correct me if I'm wrong, you also had to take acceptance accountability to yourself where you know there's a point that you need to ask for help or do you feel like it's when you're going through a problem is that hard that it's hard to ask for help so so let me tell you right i i think even till now i'm still struggling with this right mm -hmm. it's still something that i i almost i can't tell the difference from when to when to ask for help mm -hmm. and when i should do the shit myself because i'm just always doing the shit myself like 
So let me even tell you. Let's say, because you know, I told you I had the experience when someone decided to, will I say, defriend me or unfriend me, mm-hmm. particularly because, you know, they felt like. So, and I understood where they were coming from. And where they were coming from was the angle of if they were going to be friends with me, they needed to have that trust that, mm. you know, they can come yeah, we can through communicate for me. And yeah, and, you know, let it, let it not be that I'm looking at them as just someone who is ready to spite me in place of help me, right? So I could understand where they were coming from, but it couldn't change the fact that I had this inbuilt in me. And so it wasn't just going to switch in one day. I wasn't just going to suddenly start accepting help in one day. You get, mm-hmm. I've lived my entire life always having to handle shit myself, always having to, okay, see this, because, and this is not even monetary, I'm, I'm talking about general problems, even psychological, you know, even if I'm talking to someone, it, it it's not going to just, I won't just automatically say, oh, you know what, I'm depressed, I need your help, talk to me. I Most times, I'm sitting through my thoughts, and I'm just, I'm oh, just, every day, you know, so I'm, every damn thank you very much, you know? day, so I'm every sitting through day my thoughts, I'm with my thoughts, bro, I'm sitting through my thoughts, and I'm just like, yeah, I I need to figure <laughs> my shit out. Do you get it? There's no part of me that feels like I need to talk to someone. Mm. And I understood where they were coming from. But you see, like I said, I'm I'm still struggling with that till now because I'm still in that. I, I won't I won't lie. I mean, maybe a lot less now, but there's still a very significant part of me that feels like I should still handle. No, and there's it. nothing wrong in that because, like I said, even me saying that I struggle with it a lot, like. In fact, mine just comes out when... I think mine comes out more... It's unfortunate. Once I reach my limit, that's when I start asking for help. And it's... I'm already mentally... And mind you, at that point, I'm already mentally, like, exhausted and to a point that I'm running mad sometimes. Like, people don't realize this is even me opening up. Like, there's some... Like, I remember last year, especially... I keep bringing up last year because the year just started. There were times I'm trying to run Sunday last year. I'm trying to do this. I'm going through a lot of personal problems that nobody knows i'm going through and shit that maybe my close close boys know like because they can see it in my face like there was a point last year like if i I won't even say my boys at least my friends people Mm -hmm. that saw me when they see me out they'll be like my what you're going what's wrong with you like you're going through something i'm like i'm all right man i'm good but it's like i can't talk i felt like i can't talk because i think especially as men there are certain times you feel like you get to a certain position that you don't want people to look at you in a certain way because you don't want to come back down yeah, from that like, position like you don't that want them, you feel like you're you already them, in. Let me give you an example. In fact, this is this is so you see you see this thing about like asking for help. Mm. One of the downsides is if the help is not enough. So let me give you an example. And it's, it's not even going to be monetary. Mm. Let's say something like psychological, right? Mm-hmm. Because I have had days when I, I was very... De- and this depression thing is not even something we can talk about now. We're going to have a whole episode about depression. Yeah, good <laughs> yeah. point, good point. Because this is not even... But So let's say I was depressed at some point, right? And um, of course, my very first instinct was to just not talk about it. Because, I mean, who am I going to... Dep- the way Nigerians handle depression... I mean, unfortunately, the way we were brought up is like you depression. You're it. not depressed. It's Jesus. Yes, this, exactly. Huh? They tell you to muscle it out until you are not depressed anymore right so but it's a real thing it's a real emotion that we actually go through and i was depressed at some point and you know there was just so in that time the only people i could really talk to were maybe people who were also depressed and so we were kind of basking in the joy of the mutual depression a trauma there's something in fact what's funny is all these terms and all that i learned from a lot of women shout out to all the women in my life that actually helped me this year i appreciate you but there's something in nigeria especially we do called trauma bonding exactly so i didn't even what know was. what the hell that was, so that's what it was. last yes. year because you can relate to an extent oh yeah but the problem is when you're doing that Sometimes you find a solution, but you're not actually getting the solution you need. That's, that's exactly what I'm getting at. You're not actually going to proper like my best friend. You're just sharing. You're yo, just sharing. when I went to like, I'll be honest. I can open up on the show. Like my birthday, my thirtieth birthday. I told you I ran away. Yeah. Because I was depressed as fuck. And the thing is, you won't see it with the stuff I'm doing, but I was genuinely depressed with a yeah. lot of shit, and that's because it was stuff ge- stemming from the year before work Planning all that out, nigeria yeah. that i was like yo for my 30th i just want to take a break from nigeria man like just go to america when i was with my best friends like i was with my childhood friends people that you know you can open up about anything they're not judging you because they've known you since mm-hmm. and she was telling me something about like all the mental shit you've been going through she's like have you actually tried to take care of yourself mentally i said what do you mean have you gone to a therapist have you gone to this i'm like hell no why would i go to a therapist then she said let me ask you a question when you're sick who do you go to? A doctor. Yeah. 
for your body. When you're sick in your body, you go to a doctor, right? So why would you not do the same thing for your brain when you feel sick in your brain? And why won't you go to a doctor? And since that day, I've thought of that same statement like, damn, why haven't I gone to a therapist or something this whole time? And it's because of, like we said, the stigma. Yeah. That is brought upon us as black people and especially as Africans slash Nigerians. In fact, let me tell you, if you're going to see a therapist, your African parents will just be like, yo, see a therapist for what? And what I, do you need to no, I told my mom, like, my mom's my G, right? But we obviously... Just pray about My it. mom's my G, but obviously as parent, Nigerian parents, you still have those clashes. I told her, I'm, I'm trying to start therapy. For what? I, I remember she came like, ah, for what? Like, no, you just talk and Jesus... Yeah, uh, thank you. Like, so mom, you go and see a pastor. Mom, yeah. it's not about... First off, I hate that. Like, and Nigerian parents, if you watch this thing, please, stop I mean, God, God bless God, you guys. Don't get me wrong. No, work, I tell people, please, look, we, don't we get it twisted. God is the reason why I'm able to talk the way I can talk now in terms of express myself mm-hmm. and actually talk about these issues because I couldn't before. And that's because I talked to him because there was a point I had nobody when I felt like I had nobody because I couldn't talk. That's only him. However, the same God we go to ask for help for will actually give you help. Exactly. There's a reason. In fact, I always there's joke. There's a reason therapists exist. Go- Literally, like there's a reason they exist. You think God are, is not equipping these people with the knowledge of how to handle these things, but exactly. the stereotypes we bring amongst ourselves does not let us go there. Let us look at our white counterparts and shout out to all the white people that love watch the show. We love you too. I know that, but we're just we're just being real. If you look at certain Oibo families, as we like to say, in America or other countries, they have the privilege to go to therapists, to go to these things because it's not looked down upon in their societies. Yeah. Why for us in our societies, looked down upon? And yes, I feel like we are the ones that have the most <laughs> mental kidney. I mean, it makes us strong. <laughs> the funny thing is, in saying all this, it makes us strong as hell. That's why yeah. Nigerians especially were... When you see us, as much as we have so much struggle here, that's why when we leave the country, see some of us doing bam, 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 bam. Yeah. But the problem is we're all holding a lot, a lot, of, of, trauma. A lot of trauma. That if we trauma. actually could start tackling this a shit, you would, it would shock you how much healing a lot of us would do. And so, I mean, here's another Let me ask you another question. Do you feel like when asking for help, let me ask you this, very do you go more to guys or girls for help? I mean, it's a good question. Um, so I think that is very, very determined by the kind of problem I have. Right? Yeah. Um, so first of all, I actually never go to anybody. <laughs> but yeah. I, again, I, I still try to, like I said, I'm still working on it. But So, okay, I'll answer this question. But I wanted to finalize on something. Yes. So, so when you were saying that, so I wanted to touch on something I was trying to land after I said that, you know, you ask somebody for help, you, you trauma bond, right? Mm. After trauma bonding, this is where it gets scary. And you talked about it, so I wanted to just, like, agree with you. The trauma bonding doesn't give you a solution, right? <laughs> and so, because trauma bonding doesn't give you a solution, you mentioned something about, you know, not wanting to appear depressed again. <laughs> so, so, no, no, no. It's a real thing, and it's a real problem. And, you see, you're now, you're now back to acting like you're not depressed, Yo. So, because you spoke about the problem and now you guys are like, okay, yeah, so, and they won't even ask you, okay, so you're good now. You're good now because you were able to relate. Relate. And so, momentarily, but there was no solution so that mom- was found. Exactly. So, momentarily, you're happy. But, you've not solved your problem. Mm. In that time, you're just relieved for the few minutes that the person's there. The minute, a, a day or two, self. A day or two, even. But the minute they go back and then one of those real life problems comes back to you, back to depression again. So, I, I could really heavily resonate when you said there's also a part of not asking for help because you don't want to seem like you are that. You know how it's saying mm, that guy's always depressed. Mm, that's always, you don't want to appear as that person, and so you you suck it in. You just like swallow everything that's meant to sorry, come with. You just said something that triggered me, man. Because somebody like that's why I said like again when I say these IJGB jokes and all is like it's genuine because of perspective everywhere. In Nigeria, we are the most judgmental society. We are. I agree with we're you hypocrites. We're, we all are. Me, see, I'll take accountability yes. too. Sometimes yes. me too, I'll be hypocrites. Yes, same. And in doing so, a lot of times, it is hard for somebody to be their natural self on an everyday level. You can be yourself around certain people and like when you're on your own. Yeah. But sometimes, because of the society we're there's in, a, there's, a facade, there's a facade you have to put on. Not that, in fact, you don't even have to because that's why I said it gets to a level of knowing yourself and 
healing that when you're truly yourself, there's a freedom. Yeah. Which is what all of us strive to be too. Like me, I I sometimes I'm there, whereas like some days I feel free. I don't give a fuck what anybody's saying. Then there's sometimes I do conform to societal pressure. And I'm human. Yeah. But that's why I said even my goal this year is to really just get to that knowing yourself where so I asked a question to a friend this day, and he's one of my friends, very wise boy like this. I, I don't want to beat the names up, but shout out to my nigga. You know who you are. But um, him, I asked him, do you go therapy? He's like, I want to, but I tried it. But I realized that because I'm somebody that asks a lot of questions to myself, I realized there's a lot of things I need to solve myself, whereby I need to actually take the action of solving these problems. And that's another thing I realized in terms of the asking for help, whereby sometimes we always say we want to ask for help, but do we actually try, try to, solve, to solve the problems ourselves? Because mm-hmm. you know how you said, you said it yourself, a lot of us were, oh, sorry, I said, sorry, ourselves. But the question is, do the ones that say they solve it themselves, do they actually try? Yeah. So most times it ends with thinking about it, most times. And um, so let me answer your question so that we don't forget about it. So do I ask? guys or girls more or oh yeah ask, sorry sorry yeah. i did ask that yeah, question yeah, yeah. So i thought you answered do I, ask, do I ask guys or girls more um so like i said it's very peculiar to the kind of problem that i'm having um but i find that so for example monetary problems almost nobody so let me give an example let me give an example so you know i said i had this instance where not asking not accepting mm. help kind of like affected the friendship and everything so now i kind of try to look at things from the other person's perspective as well mm-hmm. so, so I, I make them feel relevant as my friend mm-hmm. so i don't want them feeling like they bring no value to me as my mm-hmm. friend so let's say for example what i need is one million right mm-hmm. i would just tell the person oh yeah i need some money maybe like 50k 100k that's not really what i need but i want them to feel a little bit like they've helped a little bit right so they're like okay yeah i can help it but that's not really what i need but i'm just like okay you know so a bit of that action helps me with understanding that they're actually ready to be there for me mm. right so it's not a test not it's just making them feel of course the 50k will still maybe do a thing or two thereabouts but it's it's more so that i can understand that look this is not something they are looking to hold on to when the time comes because to them it was genuine i want my friend to feel better in this time that he's mm-hmm. or she's going through something so um but I, for monetary sometimes like it's, it's mixed Right? Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily have like a, for this one I go to girls, for this one I go to guys. It's usually dependent on the character of the person. Do you know that with you saying that I've never gone, not that I've never, but I guess it's self-pride that I don't, when it comes to money talks, I don't talk to women as much about it unless it comes up. Like, And when it comes up, I talk about it more of a case whereby these are the things I'm spending on or investing in. But to actually say, like, hey, I'm struggling. There's that pride. Same, same. I because don't, don't. there's one girl. I'll give her a name. She's an influencer. Shout out to Lani Badge. I love you forever and you know yourself. Because there's a day on my close friends, I was struck. Yo, that's what I said. That early. That's what I said. People don't even understand. Like, that early last year, I was struggling most of 2021. It wasn't to the end that I started seeing the returns of everything I was doing. Mm. That was the day I was struggling. Bro, I didn't even have like 50K in my account because everything was just going to something, something like that. Yeah. Or content that wasn't even making money or yeah, just yeah. trying to survive. This girl one day just saw I was struggling on there, just like venting. She said, send me your account number. This girl sent me like 50, 100K. I started crying. In my, <laughs> I was crying in my <laughs> I've never told this story. I was just crying. That was called Tony. I was like, Tony. You don't understand how you just did that. Like, oh, it felt like a million. And, and there was a pride though, but it felt weird. I was so happy, but at the same time, I was like, you're like, damn. Like, a girl like, is really sending me yeah, see, this, but in me asking you that question is because, bro, when you have good women in your life that are your friends, they'll be the ones who, I feel, and I agree. guys to go out your way I like agree. that, your niggas. Because a lot of my niggas, like, they know themselves. Like, a lot of my niggas have gone out their way for me. Like, there's some of my niggas that were even, at like, that same time, helping me with 50K, yeah. helping me with 100K, that I'll pay everybody back. Yeah. But for a woman, I just feel like when a woman decides to genuinely help you, not even a woman you are seeing or talk to, but a friend, a friend yeah. that's, like, somebody so you I, really I think, need to I think keep what close. You have, I think what you should have asked, the question should have been, who do I accept help from more? Because I accept, mm. yeah. Let me tell you why I said this. So you see how you're you're not the one who asked Tolandi Badge. She's the one who sent help. Fair, so fair. so accepting help more 
Fair. I would actually say that I accept help more from women. So in asking in that same regard, asking though sometimes you talking is asking. Yes. Yeah, so so well, so I guess it gets who who who. Re- so you're not wrong, yeah. but I'm trying to understand what yeah. you're saying, like because you know sometimes when we say asking, we always think is the question, can you help me? Where sometimes you just communicating yes, is asking. Yes. But then it's like who receives the message first or okay. who understands it better? Okay, so I say I'll say. It's still a mixed crowd, but I guess in my own life, I can only speak personally, women are a little more sensitive to it. Mm. And they are the ones who usually would respond quicker. Now, it could also translate to because fair, just like... Fair, I like you yeah, say that, yeah. It could also yeah. translate to because just like us, the other guys are also going through it, right? Yeah, and, and, they, like, and, and they themselves and they also don't know how to... They exactly, don't know how to, you know. You get it. But although, I, of course, I've had my guys come through for me easy, right? But like I said, if we're talking about conversations, quick response is always the women, right? And maybe that's also why I'm also shy to even talk about the problem because I know that sometimes, even when I'm not asking and I'm just having a conversation, you know, sometimes it's just eventing. It's yeah. just, I'm just trying to vent, but the venting might come off as I, I, I need I had to, to leave. That. You know what's funny? Like, I will say there was a point, you know, last year and all that I was venting a lot to some girls that i was you know talking to and mm-hmm. all that and subconsciously i would overthink and it's not to say some of these girls weren't genuinely there to help because there were some girls that were genuinely ready to help and it's like i distanced myself away from them if i'm being so honest that's, that's and the reason i did is because there was that nerve of i don't want her to feel like S- feel like the, you, you don't even want to make it the norm like you don't want to make it that every time i'm texting her she's expecting that i'm going to start talking about, about my again. problem or nothing but you know, and so, the funny thing is like for some women that are listening to this is like there's a safety net we feel in you like because I, I ain't gonna lie like i look at both sides sometimes like oh you have to be aware of guys that dump their problem on you all that but it's like i'm not dumping my problem because in the end it's like i'm safe and comfortable with you that actually sharing i can share and vice versa i always tell girls like certain not even girls just people in general if i can communicate or open up to you you can easily do the same for me so if i'm opening up to a girl in that way there's no reason why she can't open up or talk to me in the same way but i guess as a guy or as a man i sometimes feel like me saying too much of my problem and i think that's that male ego that sometimes needs to die in us Mm -hmm. that is like oh i have to be the provider which we do want to be but you have your stages where it's like you're venting so much that you're feeling ah this girl won't take me seriously again or this girl will look at me in a funny way now because oh i don't have this now but my mates are so it is hard especially like i said as nigerians because you don't even see to be honest you don't even see a lot of male we don't even have a lot of male examples that show they can open up or ask for help there's no, let me let me even let me even tell you off top. So I've never I would even say this, so I've never seen my dad be in a position to ask for help. Do mm. you understand? I mean, now that I'm a grown man, I know that he most definitely has been in places. We've even yeah, had conversations. Behind the, scene, behind the scenes, like exactly. they'll never tell you. Ne- they'll never yeah, tell yeah, so you. So there was never so there was always just he figured it out himself. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So But when you say that now, would you say he figured it out? Because you just said he said he asked for no, help. No, I'm saying it so looked he that figured way. Out, he figured it out, but he still asked for help. Yeah, but I'm saying I'm saying I'm just saying it looked that way. Oh, okay. it, it looked like he figured it out by himself. But then, like when you actually get to sit down and talk about, oh, okay, and then he starts. So the thing is, the, the problem we have with um, not having any, uh, will I say, mentors in this aspect is because one, we already have that wall that you know kind of divides the african parents with mm. the african child they don't they don't africa most african parents don't know how to, i mean i guess our generation now is unlearning a lot of that but mm-hmm. lots of african parents don't know how to have like open conversations with their children <laughs> like how you let them know ah, well, you know what things are tight now. Af- american families do this uk families they'll be like you know what things are a little tight now but we can afford this we can afford this let's mm. just things will get better but soon. even our parents have that pride like yeah no i'm no, not struggling, struggling. i'm not if you, any parent you get it so to you that's your role model. That's your, okay, so he's taking everything head on. I should take everything head on to when it's my turn, you know? So um, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I look at it from certain angles where you don't even know, like, you see, because, because you don't share your problems, you're already expecting other people not to be open as open mm. because you're now trying to understand that everybody doesn't want to share their problems. Mm. So sometimes even when you see someone going through stuff, and then they say, oh, no, it's fine. I don't really want to talk about it. Sometimes you should be more persistent. 
especially because like it might be something they just need a bit of push before they share. Mm-hmm. Because you know when you hear these stories about suicidal acts and someone just oh, next he was happy, next minute he killed himself. It's because most times, even when as a guy we're saying, oh no, it's fine, we're cool. Sometimes we need that extra push, that extra. But you do have to read. I get you're right. Do you want I'm not even wrong, but yeah. there, I get there is also the times you have to respect that boundary. Oh yes, of course. Because yes, even what you said, like um, if what you said, like I, I can really definitely like I had um about how many? It actually sounds so messed up to even count. Um, I had about two or three friends. Is it three? Yeah, it was about three of them that passed away last year. Okay. From suicide, mm-hmm. and one of them in particular hits me a lot because he was somebody that was very popular in our circles, and me and him were very cool, like behind the scenes. It wasn't like very loud, whereby like you see us at every event. Yeah, like, but like it's more like at my parties, had, like yeah, yeah. at my parties, you see us together, and then behind the scenes, we go yarn and all that. Yeah. In fact, he even he was even the one that got me my first major deal with um EMG when I did my entertainment company. Right. My biggest event ever was with Fireboy and DJ Neptune and he's the one that like got me the deal and that all did, that. Yeah. And when you see this dude, gentle giant, big dude like this and all that, like the funniest dude and all that, right? And I remember the like the day they just called me and said like, "Yo, he passed away how? Suicide." What? And you're like, "Wait, but this dude, his family is doing well." He was making his own money and all that suicide. How? Because he was doing better than I, to me. Not even that you look at someone, oh, you're doing better than me. But I'll admit, like, in my yeah. in the pictures, like, you're doing better than me. What's up? Like, and you would have never guessed, like, you'll talk to somebody like that, you know. And it's funny when we'll talk, we'll open up with each other. Not about every personal issue, but there's well, a way like we that conversate that, that you can ask questions. But I guess as men, you also respect that boundary. That's why I said it's hard to ask or to push more for it yeah because, because i also want to respect your boundary yeah. as a man but like i said it wasn't until it's too late like i remember even at the funeral like i didn't even like i didn't even cry nothing i was just confused like the whole time i was just asking myself like how how yeah, and, and then I, it's like do you now start asking all your guy because you make sure do you start asking all your guy friends are you okay 24 yeah, 7 oh what's going through you because yeah. even you you have to be careful as a person to take in so much trauma because i had that problem at one point where a lot of people will open up to me. And I'm, sometimes I'll be asking myself, like, ah, like why are you have you ever had that situation much? where people are like, ah, like, why, why are you telling why me this much? Like, I know in a <laughs> yeah. bad way, you get what I'm saying, but yeah, it's, it's like, just like, why are you this picking is me to say different, this But yeah. they feel like they can open up to you, but it's a lot to also take in as so, a person. Sometimes it's even because it's reached the point where the cup is overflowing mm. and the next person that's a listening ear, they just need to let it out. Like, they just need to let... I mean, of course, not listening here like just a random person, mm-hmm. but someone that they know... Somebody they feel like they, at least to an extent, I'm safe in this exactly, person to yes, open ex- up that they're not up. going to go out and So it. it means that they don't need to know you. You don't have to like be going way back. It could be someone that you guys just met two months ago. But, but me like, and the guy were not... Even, that's why I said me and this guy, we were very cool, but it's not like we had gone to the same primary school, exactly. secondary school. It's just, he used to come to my parties exactly. a lot, same circles. He was close to my cousin, and that's how we started talking more and more. You know, so... And, and I think... I think, um, I mean, with this topic, we also have to, you know, talk about like, um, because you spoke about how we help ourselves. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's one thing you really mentioned that I, I thought it was really a really strong point. As much as we say, I'll handle it. How much of it are you actually handling? Right. Because I tell you, I didn't, I didn't actually start like sitting back and really taking control of my life until maybe like two years ago three years ago, you would think that you have everything under control and you just do But in the end, you're just moving with the system. You get mm. to an age where life now is really yours. Like, mm. it's now really yours and that's when it starts to hit. I think mine just started hitting this year, 2023, because I realized, I'm like, damn, nigga, you 30. So and it wasn't like 30 like in a bar because everybody likes to put that negative stare. Oh, yeah, 30. Yeah, See, just- life is just starting because you finally realize, like, wait... I'm actually in control of my life. And it's not like exactly. I wasn't thinking like that yeah. before. Because in my 20s, I had a lot of experiences. I've done a lot. I've traveled a lot. I've done a lot of things I wanted to do. But in terms of self-actualization, because of the experiences I've been through, it's like now I finally realized, like, damn, like, this is really, you like, really, like, you don't really, really have really to give yours. a fuck about what anybody says in yeah. terms of the negative opinions, the stereotypes, you know, the things they say you have to have in a societal norm. It's like, no, bro. Yeah. It's what do you want for your life? Exactly. What makes you happy? 
and go for it. And that's why I said it's just now at 30. And you see, and you see that just now, there's so much damage now you have to like unlearn. And that is what I'm trying. And that's why I said I'm trying to do that. Now. And it sounds funny. Like, and that's why I tell my friends now to my friends that are listening to this, shout out to you. I love you. And that's why, like, that's the reason I've even distanced myself, especially in this last year, because I was focused on building my stuff, but I'm also focused on trying to work on myself. Now, to some friends, now the problem with that is, especially everything in life is all about perception. Because especially in our generation now, where the problem is we're in a social media era. So you can be going through shit, but that person is posting enjoyment, life. Woo! Like, exactly. you know how I many people message me every day? Your job seems so, you seem like you have no worries because you're just at the beach, oh you're just days. this, you're just enjoying. I'm like, this, motherfucker. I, have a lot to say on this. I was about to even cuss yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. We're allowed to cuss on the show, but it's like, yes. do you, that's how stressful it is. Like, do you understand what I'm going through? And vice, like, and not even just me, any of us, to even do what we're doing, especially even just us in Lagos. People outside Lagos see our lives. Oh, you guys in Lagos must be having fun 24 7. All of you guys that come for Dirty December, that come for one month, you just lived your best life, right? Why are you not here now? Uh-huh. No, be here. See how just Keep last living. month, though, exactly. all of us were in the clubs and all that. This month now, all of us are struggling for fuel. We're struggling for light. Exactly. We have an election coming up that's giving us anxiety. There's still problems going on every day that we're now even feeling more because December is over. Exactly. You think we all ain't going exactly. through problems? And the thing is, <laughs> and you know the funny thing about this is, let me give an example. I mean, I am a very good example. I'm into fashion, right? Mm-hmm. By nature, I'm supposed to look good every time. <laughs> like, so, I mean, you can imagine if... I don't dress the way I dress. People mm. won't take fashion, you know, because you have there's a, so a certain image and perception you need exactly. to give for you to push your business. And it's not even just like it, it has to be consistent. Like, mm. I have to, like, every day just That's show word. up. That's a good word. Right? Yeah. I have to every day just show up, mm-hmm. like, in that image. Now, tell me how I'm supposed to look depressed. Can't. Because you every, day mar- you have to, every day I have to, every day I have to slay every day. But it's, I'm going to tell people that, look, because I'm like, see, you know, this these last few months have been the worst for me. Like, they've been horrible. They've been like, yeah, but I've been seeing you on social media. You've been looking fresh. <sighs> Every you, day. Have you even asked me, especially, and as I say, especially as men, I feel like we go through it the, through it the most. Because mm-hmm. with women, they have that emotional capability to, to ask expre- questions yes, and express like to just, themselves. And be like, you even know if what they're I'm looking just, good on the ground, their friends say, are you okay? Let me, let Men. me, let me even, let me. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, your guy will even come to you with the worst. And you two, you are doing well now. Nah, let me, let me burst your head. I saw a tweet recently. And uh, so it's an old tweet, but I think they just put it up again. It went viral again. And the tweet said, you know, um, it, as a guy, you would talk to a baby, you'd be telling her things like, um, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going through stuff now. Like work is killing me. That's, yeah. The tweet was about, oh, my work is really killing me now. I'm really... Work is really like stressing me out and everything. And then the babe replies and says, Oh, okay, now come and take me out so that you know your stress can be relieved. So, of course, this this doesn't address the <laughs> entirety of the demographic. But that's to let you know why some this guys is, this also is don't why express themselves. People don't express themselves or always stressed out. Because I swear to God, if you told me that kind of thing, I'll block you, <laughs> I'll cut you Bruh. off. Like do you know how annoying? Sorry, like that just annoyed me because he brought up a, a past experience. Yes, because it's, it's like, a, it's open, I am going, it's, open it's not even that you said, hey, let us go out. You see, sometimes, ladies, let me make you understand something. You can say the same thing. You just have to word it rightly. If you said, hey, let's go out to get your mind off it. Do you know that I am willing to, again, take you out? Yes. Take, notice how I said take you out to. Yeah, because I'll still be the one to pay. Because at the, at the same time, it might be like you need a change of scenery. Yes, you need a change of Yo! scenery. But just but if you are you now saying me? it in a way like, eh, "Take me, you selfish individual." <laughs> You selfish individual. Because, bro, look at the difference what I said in terms of let's go. Bro, I've had, we both had it now. Yeah. That I've had days where I was going through something and the people say, you know what, let's go. And I'll be like, you know what, fuck it. Do you want, can you meet me? Yeah. Can you meet me here? Let's do this. And I'm paying for everything. No issue. That's why yeah, I said and, sometimes. And, this that, whole, and that could even be the little relief you need just to like, you know. To get your up mind your off yes, it and all that. Like, but then you saying, eh, come and take me out. Or, you know what, eh, if it, it's selfish. 
And, and you know, the, so the thing is, of course, again, that's just a, you know, it's, it's, it's a small like pocket that. number. I'm so sorry. If it sounds personal, I'm sorry. It's not personal. It's just that we live in Lagos. So unfortunately, yeah, this happens a lot. Happen, yeah. So, so, you know, I, I, I just remember the tweet and that's just, so why I brought it up was because this is to let you know how people trivialize the problems that men have, mm. because you see it as a, hey, guy, man, now you'll be okay. You see my point? Because that's the only reason you would even think that you would say something like, come and take me out so that your problems can, or so you can feel better. It's because you don't even think that the problems are just put on your table are even important enough to address. You want to know why some of these men are so toxic? It's because they feel they have no avenue to open up or talk. Yes, and so and so <laughs> they, they take it out on other things. Take it out on, oh, let me go to club and pop bottles. Let me just, if they have the money, they take yeah, it out I've on. seen it, bro. I've been in the entertainment industry all these years, doing all these parties. I've seen it with my own eyes that, in the same party. Yo, that's how... I've, and I tell people, for me, my own parties or my events is I genuinely try and get to know people. That's why anybody can tell you. Any party I've gone to, I can go to every single person in that party. Yo, you good? You all right? Because I watch everybody. And I've seen some people's eyes there where it's either one, that party, you're taking your... You're, you can literally see they're releasing so much stress from yeah. the life. Something's going on Something's that they're just releasing on, yeah. stress. Or sometimes... That person is going through something so much that even at the party, it's still showing. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's yeah. still showing. You know, you know this thing, you know, you, so you know, because you just brought this up now, I also just remember that, you know how people say, oh, you know what, you know, I'm going to the gym to release my demons. Now, now, <coughs> you are, we both work out. Like, we work out regularly. We're people who go to the gym. Now, tell me if I'm wrong here, but for me, going to the gym does help me expunge a bit of stuff. But you see, the problem also with going to the gym is that the gym is also a good place to think. And so sometimes when I'm doing some workouts, say for example, maybe I'm doing like dumbbell lifts or maybe I'm doing like, you know, there's some workouts that because it's systemic while you're doing the reps is helping you think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My only problem sometimes is that that thinking goes back, it goes back to me thinking of the problem I was trying to solve. It happens to me sometimes. Fair. Right. Now, of course, the gym does more good than harm Mm -hmm. because I definitely will see my mates who are working out together. You know, it just, it lets me, uh, in fact, I pour out the anger in my sets and my reps, but there are some workouts. For example, like I'm, imagine me doing treadmill. If I'm on the treadmill and I'm jogging on the treadmill, like I'm going to suddenly enter a zone where at first I'm relieved and I'm just thinking, okay, no, this is a nice view. This is nothing. Like, this is good. And the next thing, maybe if I it could just be like, maybe I see a car drive by. And that car just reminds me of one of that car that one of that person was <laughs> driving. And then from there, I just I'm just back here again. I'm just like Fuck. I got like for me working out, playing sports, I'm solution based. Playing sports, I don't think yes. I don't think of any issue. Just because, like I said, for me, sports has always been something like the reason I was very very good at what I did is because all my problems, life problems, emotional problems. Once I'm on that field, once I'm playing, you forget everything. Yeah. I forget every like all that frustration. Even the gym now, because obviously I don't play sports professionally anymore. But it's like now I pull it all out there that I think of solutions only. Is 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 actually the opposite. Whereby once I leave the gym, you're about always, to. Oh, it's like shit. it's like this. Ah, let me. So let me tell you. Ah, see that that no, leaving the gym like, is like ah. that leaving the gym is like. It's like a downer. Like, it's, so you know, you know how you have like the high. It's the low. low. It's like when I'm walking out the gym, it's like ah, I have to go back to uh, problems. But I try and remember the solutions I was thinking about in that gym and to go for it. But because of time, yeah. Because I just realized, like, damn, we have been going in we, for we, a yeah, See, this is a very good yeah, topic. Yeah. See, so, so wait. So first of all, I think we need to help the audience with solutions, right? Um. So how about you tell us something that has helped you? Now, something that's I can't say be... one on camera, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yeah, so it could, it could be that, I would say, I would, that, what I'm going to say is this um, to a lot of our viewers that can relate, and I know you can, smoking weed does not help all your problems. Yeah, it doesn't, please. Let, like, let's just not, start there. I'll be the first, <laughs> I'll be the first to tell you at first, I thought it did. Then you get into this cycle slash habit. Especially in Lagos. Because I always say this. Outside Lagos, my when I used to smoke weed outside Lagos, like it was calm. Like it was actually solution based. Yeah, but now it is. But just because in Lagos problem, oh my god, problem <laughs> no they finish in Lagos. Like every day you wake up. Every no matter yeah. rich or poor, that Nepal alarm, yeah, we all go that's already the minimum. But yes. it's like because problem doesn't finish, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit, yeah. It, and not, a lot of people in Lagos try and disguise anymore. it, including me. I've been part of it that mm-hmm. you disguise weed as a problem, stuff like that, but you're but it's escaping really just, yeah, your problem yeah, and not exactly. thinking of solutions. So 
my first thing is just say it's not a sweet is not a problem solver but communicating is a way to help your problems now who you communicate to it's up to you to use wisdom and also be comfortable in yourself to know who to open up to like for me now i'm at a point whereby i know my tribe of people i can open up to about any problem then there's also the case whereby for me as an individual because now i do content and talk that now i'm comfortable to talk about certain topics online that other people can give me solutions but at the same time in saying all this i will say i am still finding the solutions to express myself more and talk because everybody always thinks i think that's another way people come to me because they think i'm always talking or i have all the solutions because i talk online and all that it's like my nigga they go through the same problem maybe even worse <laughs> maybe even worse than me. <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah i would say it's still an ongoing thing but at least communicating to my tribe and doing something i love which is content has helped me find different ways to communicate so that was my to find something you love to do that helps you express yourself whether it's sports whether it's your talent whether it's communicating on platforms and then at the same time find the things that you're maybe doing now that are actually not working for you and admit they're not working for you hence why i brought up the weed example so so i think i think for me one of my major ones and so i tell all my guys all my female friends all my male friends like one of the key things, especially if you're living in, if I, it doesn't even just like it doesn't just encompass Lagos alone. This is worldwide, right? Mm. The first thing for me that you need to do to get a few things off your shoulders is to first break from the norm of the society. So, mm. if you know we're in a society where oh they put a cap at the age of thirty that by thirty you must have achieved you must somebody. Like, that's so not first, true. the first thing you need to do is to you figure out how to break out from that. Now either you figure it out by standing your ground in certain things you know how so let me tell you i'm in a place now where if i talk to my parents like they can't tell me what they think i should do instead and i will go ahead with what they think i should do rather than what i really want to do so i'm not you, before when we we're younger like maybe they say oh go out and talk to this auntie you just go and talk you know you don't like that auntie you don't like her for, no, like, wait, i wish you would tell me to go you, you get, so now if they tell me oh go and just i'm like okay but but you know I don't like her. So why are you making me talk to her? Now, so you see that I've used that as one avenue to begin to break from the things mm. that I'm normally capped in. Also with the whole, oh, by this age you should do this. If you're trying to push marriage to me, I tell you, look, the way I see marriage is I want to be ready. I'm not going to do it because it's a responsibility. I want to be happily married and I want to see the person and live the rest of my life with the person I've chosen. So if you think that I'm only doing this because I'm, I'm only going to do this because, oh, I'm now at the age, you're wrong. And a lot of people are under this pressure. Some people, is, like you said, some people can just have money and everything, but, you know, there's a life that is being imposed on them mm-hmm. that is creating the depression that they're currently going through. And so that's not being able to break up from that you know there's some rich families that okay but you see the system here is that we give you an arranged marriage oh i got a lot of about to say don't i got a lot of rich friends going through some shit you get it? so it could be that oh there are arrangements <laughs> that rich friends going they, through some shit rich that, family they going through some shit exactly their lineage is that oh they do arranged marriages it's not a choice thing they do arranged marriages because they need to keep that they need to keep the family wealth within the family mm-hmm. and so okay we've already arranged uh, this man's daughter He's going to come and marry you. There's no, que- no questions asked. I wish to hell you would. God now, you see, from outside, we're just looking at them as ballers. In fact, they'll do wedding pictures. They'll show you know, smiling and everything. The biggest wedding halls. But mm. they're not happy. You find that sometimes, oh, yeah, the husband went to do this and killed himself. Ah, you see, the, be, you see the, the problem is that. That's why I talk about standing your ground. If you, if you say, okay, if you don't, I'll tell you, you disown me. You know what? If disowning me makes me happy, then maybe that's what I'm going to do. Just, okay, take all your things from me. Let me go start afresh somewhere. Like, let it be that I'm genuinely happy. Am I struggling in the beginning? Yeah, and even if you struggle, we're already struggling in Nigeria. Yes. Trust me. So, uh, <laughs> I'd rather that than live a life where every single day I look at this person they've arranged to marry me and I'm just unhappy. Like, I'm just thinking, what the hell? Is this my life? Do you get? So, if you have to keep thinking, is this my life? Then you definitely need some things to change in your mind. And it doesn't have to be in marriage in terms of, oh, is this my life? In terms of, if you have to live your life for other people, especially like for Nigerians, that you have to live the life your parents want. Exactly. Whether it's from post-education. I mean, obviously, a lot of it, when it comes to education, we're stuck there. But post-education, post-education oh, yeah. you have to get this job. Oh, you have to stay with us here. Oh, you have to act this way. You have to do this. 
because you I mean, have to start asking yourself what makes me as happy. the person happy yeah and trust me the vex that your parents are going to vex for you for that period of time once you find yourself and are comfortable in yourself and succeed in the things you want to do as yourself they are always going to switch i mean this is i mean don't you know this is exactly why we always have a lot of cases of oh uh one person was a doctor somewhere but now he's an influencer oh this person was a lawyer somewhere but now they are into sports now you see the thing is Usually, unfortunately, for a lot of our, our generation people, the younger generation are doing a lot better because now they're not even hearing word. Mm. <laughs> they're just, do whatever you want to do after you need, that's your business. I'm not even listening to you. Mm. But in our generation, you go and you maybe study to be an engineer or whatever. Like You still even have to practice that thing for a few years before you can get to break out. Because that thing that they've asked you, you're still going to work some job. Because in that time, you've not given them a concrete plan. You know, like maybe I want to go into music, for example, right? And you know how every Nigerian or African parents, you know, which kind of, what do you mean music? I spent all my money on school. You want to do music? Just, Meanwhile, they are sitting, maybe they are sitting on very big talents. But you see, until you can show a little, I mean, African parents will not accept you until you show, show something to them that, okay, you know, you know, it's when they start seeing results in that thing you say you want to do. That's when they can ask that support. And the funny thing is, they don't know the add to the depression like that because I can relate. Like, Bro, me, I have, heavily. I have two degrees, for God's sakes. Yes, I have people still asking, oh, I thought you were just a hustler. My own family, like, <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, if we're being honest, like, I remember when I started this content thing, my own family, especially my mom, the way they looked at me was so fun. Because you can't... And the thing is, I like looking at things from perspective. Because you can imagine you are coming... Like, at the time I came back to Nigeria, 2020, post-COVID, like, I've lost everything. I lost my job, my babe. Like, I had no money whatsoever. So, my mom was actually taking care of me, like, that first 2020 until, like, yeah. I started, you know, just starting hustling again. But in that, in that 2020, that's when I started TikTok. You're seeing me dancing on TikTok, shaking waist and all that. <laughs> then... Obviously, it's going viral. Then imagine you're at home, unemployed technically, still yeah. trying to hustle. Your mom's helping you. Yet you have aunties and uncles are sending the stuff to your mom. Is this not my wife shaking and all that and doing it? Uh, and your family and your family's not understanding it. But in your head, you know the plan. And the funny, obviously, a year later now, the case is different now because, you know, thank God, they you know, results. it's all changed. Yeah. Results have changed. But it also, what they don't realize, not even just Nigerian parents, even Nigerians or people, that act that way is it creates a lot of animosity sometimes because yeah. depending like on like me vendetta. personally I'm, I'm the kind of person i've always been this way since i was a kid that's why i was like a great athlete you just i just need a little motivation in terms of you do something to annoy me or not that i'm not going to get you back in terms of you as a person but that thing is going to stay in my there's mind to succeed yeah to go better hence why even me subconsciously like when i saw how not just my family yo even i had friends I had close friends. As I said, they added to the depression. That's why I said, who could I... You weren't talking about who could I talk to because I had friends that even were switching on me when I was doing this content shit. And it's like, I'm just doing something I like. But now a year later, it's blowing up. You're everywhere. You see some of those friends, you know we're saying something or switching and know that you're like, wait, I'm still not going to forget this thing. So it plays on your mind too. And that's why I said, like, now I'm at a point I know myself that... Like, uh, that's the advice we're also giving people, like, once you know yourself, you would understand, like, the real from the fake. Yeah. You would also under you also understand what can affect you and can affect you. Like, the things that affected me a year ago cannot affect me now anymore. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure vice same thing for yeah, you now. Like, yeah, the things that affect you at one point can't, but... Because of time, because Jesus Christ, we have actually... <laughs> you see, ah, this is some deep shit. Like, this is a great... This yeah. was actually a great episode. Yeah, it was, it was. Again, go and share this topic because some of you go and say, we only talk about Lagos women. You see, we talk about real things on here, but yeah. we appreciate you still. God yeah. bless you. So I think for me, as a closing remark, uh, just one thing that people need to get. I know that everybody respects their parents and whatnot, but the truth is, understand that your parents were also people who could have also gone through depression and didn't know how to fix themselves mm. before giving birth to you. So... Don't think that your parents are always perfect. Even if you feel like you can run to them for help, always also educate them and let them know that not everything is just pray about and it. And they they don't not, they don't know everything. To yeah, be honest, so they like don't. you have to also they make mistakes like we do. Exactly, you have to also go out do the research yourself because you have a bigger advantage than them where we're in an internet age where there's more information, information available yeah. to us to find the solutions we need. But I mean, like I said, we can continue, but shout out to you guys again. Make sure you subscribe to all our audio platforms, Spotify, Apple, 
music. I was about to say Apple Music, <laughs> iTunes, uh, yeah. and all that. Um, again, you have any shout outs? Anything you want? Yeah. Um. Um, so I mean, don't forget to you know send us DMs. Don't forget to send emails to menizims at gmail dot com or menizimspod at gmail dot com. You know, don't forget to ask your questions. I mean, we're always ready to you know answer questions if you guys have any things you want us to help with. And uh, yeah. All right. So until next time, guys, we appreciate you. This is a beautiful episode. So make sure you guys watch it. Make sure you share it. And until next time, these are the Menizim boys. We'll see you guys later. All right. <laughs>